And then the next thing that was interesting, another kind of odd development that I'm hoping isn't true. There's rumours that supposedly we're going to have a 10 p.m. curfew in the UK to some to obviously help to combat coronavirus in some way, shape or form. Now, I know I moaned already about the bars being open and stuff, but it, it, it obviously seems that the logical step with the numbers spiking, especially up north and, you know, places that surround London, it doesn't make any sense for some of these places to get locked down and then for some of the places that are densely populated such as london to not get locked down in any way shape or form especially with bars and pubs open and from what i've seen especially from spending um that weekend being out no i wasn't really out that much i actually went to paris studios recorded something and then came right back right just played around mixing a friend but i wasn't even hanging around that much and i saw a difference in the kind of vibe and the general traffic on the streets and people hanging around so if that's the case and people are going out to bars and restaurants and pubs in general on the weekends as per normal right but they're just sitting outdoors but they're still outside mingling as the government are stressing that you're not allowed to do it doesn't make any sense why those places should remain open if they're if we're kind of experiencing a spike in numbers they should close right but then the issue is if they close for a second time most of these bars and pubs and restaurants will never reopen right they're already on their last legs most of these places were not designed for delivery right they weren't designed for pickup and um, they were designed for eating in drinking in and you know sometimes eating in the garden that's it they don't have an infrastructure set up to even handle um whatever is needed to be fully operational and functional and operate at a high level on those apps right because i imagine if you're a restaurant in your bar part of the reason you might have kind of pulled off from getting on those apps is because you don't think you could do a good enough job you don't think you can replicate the quality of your goods in the restaurant right um on an app somewhere so to suddenly now be forced into doing so in order to keep the lights on must be a whole mad experience and then now to do it, you know, in the midst of no support from the government, in the midst of what the furlough basically scheme is coming to an end or something along those kind of lines, there's not going to be much cover in that respect. Um, you're just basically left on your own, in a, and you're basically left in a situation where, you know, by the time if we do go time for a second lockdown again, like I mentioned previously, more often, more likely than not. The only things that'll be open or that'll be that will survive will be like the Pretz and the Weatherspoons and the like. All your local bars and pubs that you've kind of known to love over the years will completely be, you know, they will be, you know, forgotten. Literally be forgotten. Like it will just vanish. There's no way they can survive a second lockdown. It doesn't make any sense. It really can't. And I imagine a lot of these places, especially in London, are suffering already because of the lack of tourism. So imagine trying to tell them that hey it's going to be okay if you go under a second lockdown a 10 p.m curfew it's just insane it really is so this is from the what um the andover advertiser says 10 p.m curfew is on the way within two weeks with pubs and forced to shut early it says uk faces a 10 p.m curfew within two weeks according to reports by a number of national media outlets which is definitely what happens every time there's a change in our approach or in rules they're usually leaked to the press or to media beforehand i guess to kind of gauge the public sentiment or to kind of prepare people for the change so it's not like a ball out of the blue so if there's reporting this it's more likely going to happen so again if you're read if you're listening or watching this and you're from the uk i'd advise you to get as much raving and skanking and debauchery out of your way in the next two weeks because after that it's kaposh kaput kaput um according to reports by a number of national news outlets it is understood the government is considering the drastic measure in the pacific local areas in uh, if there are further spikes in covid rates bolton in the northwest became the first town in england to have a curfew imposed after cases surged all hospitality venues were told to shut with immediate effect uh to people eating and drinking on site this includes pubs, restaurants bars and cafes like that is a lot of businesses in london that's a lot right that's a lot of people who life work is going to go completely under the drain because the government weren't able to mandate some level of kind of lockdown or mask wearing earlier on in the process to kind of avoid this and again this is the wackest thing ever isn't it boris nearly died and he still didn't know how to fix this right their leader right somebody they kind of hold up as being the guy he gets it and they still didn't change tack that's when i knew it was over for us that's when i knew we were going to be in for a year of this shit 
when Boris got it, Lily died and still nothing changed in terms of the approach from the government. It was still the same kind of hands off. Oh, let's change the slogan. Let's change the color of the slogan. Um, use your sense. What was that flipping annoying one they did previously? That kind of um, hands off or be safe, be vigilant, that sort of nonsense. It's just mad, isn't it, to think that. It continues, it says, yeah, they can stay open as takeaways, but only until 10 p.m., which, you know, what's the point? Between 10 p.m. and 5 p.m., all the percentage must close. But I've noticed, especially from what I've heard, people speaking of bars and stuff, a lot of places are staying open well past their actual closing time just to kind of get in a bit more money. And it's, I guess it's kind of been a bit of a um, a silent sort of like head nod kind of acknowledgement that everyone sort of knows people are just you know kind of skirting the rules but they're doing it just so they can keep the lights on it's not because they have money hungry landlords and bar owners it's because they respectively are paying out of their nose they're still paying rent most of these places right the mortgages haven't gone down no one's giving you discount on rent it is what it is it is thought that ministers will consider extending the policy uh in other towns Let's give it a this in other towns. Da, da, da. According to the PA news agents, Downing Street did not deny reports that the curfews are being considered to slow the spread in Corona. Jesus Christ. When asked about the reports that curfew be introduced in London, a number 10 spokesman said, We will continue to keep the transmission rate under review. We've introduced a rule of six to try and bear down on the transmission rate being given that's given um, that right recently. But as I say, we will keep that data and scientific evidence under review. So that means we're definitely going to get another one in the UK. 10 p.m. curfew. God almighty. It's going to be disaster. People aren't even listening now and the rules aren't even that stringent, right? They're not even that stringent here, the rules. They just, you know, keep your distance, wear a mask when you're indoors on public transport. And people are still not able to keep um, until to abide by that. So imagine 10 p.m. curfews. Wow. A second national lockdown will be likely to have a disastrous financial consequence for the UK, Boris Johnson said. He has asked, uh, he was asked by the Conservative MP and Chairman of Digital Culture, Media and Sports Select Committee, Julian Knight, whether the country could afford another national lockdown. Mr Johnson said, I don't want a second national lockdown. I think it would be completely wrong for this country and we're going to do everything in our power to prevent it. Which means what? If get people more infected. Again, this, this is all okay. I don't mind not locking stuff down, but it, when you can't handle people you know demanding more tests and then you're saying the service is buckling due to unprecedented demand it's like no it isn't unprecedented you you full well knew the numbers you knew people were going to panic you knew people like why wasn't this kind of um why wasn't this uh considered there should be like it's just mad isn't it like honestly like i, I honestly don't mind the, let's just kind of tough this one out right but you have to top this one out with the right under the right conditions right there should be a lot of tests just available just for the sake of it just to kind of get that shit out of the way um the ppe in some places is still a bit of an issue it's just like oh one mess up after another um can we afford it he says i very much doubt that the financial consequences will be anything 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 but disastrous but we have to make sure that we defeat the disease by the means that we have set out he says so when I see people arguing against the rule of six, saying that the government is coming in too hard on individual liberties and so on, I totally understand that and I sympathize with that, but we must, we must defeat this disease. Cool, man. All this blubber is awesome, right? He's trying to do his best Winston Churchill impression. That's cool. But again, where was all this energy in the beginning? Where was this energy when, act, when actual leadership was needed? Where was this guy, bruv? Where was he? Like, it's just a madness, bruv. Absolute madness. But hey. What do I know?